In this video, I will be working on a 2005 Honda CRV and will be removing the engine. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot out the axle nuts. It is a 36 millimeter. So we'll start with draining the oil. Okay, while the oil is draining, I'm going to start with taking this hub assembly off. So I'll start with this bottom, taking out the cotter pin and I believe that's a 17 millimeter. Okay, once you get the cotter pin removed and the 17 millimeter bolt, um, I find it easier to turn the hub this way and then I'm gonna whack it with the sludge hammer right there. Okay, once you got the ball joint loose, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda get the axle pushed in and then the next thing is to shoot out these bolts right here. So the reason for me to remove this hub is so I can get the CV axle pulled out. And then what I'm gonna do after that is I'm just gonna put the hub back in with one bolt to hold it. So I ran into a snag and this would be my last option. And this is a ball joint separator. Let's see how good this thing works. Um, just a few turns, it loosened it up. So it's a pretty good tool. The boots already tore on this, but um, but this, probably, this wouldn't damage your boot. So this is a good tool. I couldn't get this CV axle out, so if you can get it out, great. But if not, what I did was I just left it on and I dropped it with the engine. So next I'm just going to drain the coolant. While the coolant is draining, um, I'm gonna come up here on top and I'm gonna start removing things like the battery, uh, the wiring harness, disconnect um, some of these hoses that are connected to the car. So uh, that way, when we're ready to drop the engine, it's gonna be um, hopefully easy. So now with unplugging all the wiring harness and clips, um, I want to be able to kind of just lay it on the side here out of the way. Got this end where it connects. There's a plug that plugs into the alternator and the starter signal switch. Um, and then here, with the plugs that plug into the uh, VTEC solenoid and stuff. So you wanna unhook all those and then lay it up there. Went ahead and I took out the power steering line. Um, so next I'm gonna work on is taking out the hoses. Okay, so um, after getting the heater hoses removed, um, 
the engine block hose that goes to this top radiator and then the bottom is also removed and then uh, I went ahead and I disassembled the shift shifter cables and just put it to the side now I'm gonna get this 10 millimeter ground right here so what I did next was I took out the two 12s right here um, and then there's 10 millimeter bolt that holds this clutch line in and then I can just set this out of the way as well so I'm going to remove this battery tray to give me a little bit better access two 12 millimeters right there and then uh And then there's one down here. And then one on the other side of this tray. So with the battery tray, you could just loosen the two 12 millimeter bolts on the bottom. And there's one more right there. And there's one more clip on this wiring that I need to take out. So what I did next was I moved the power power steering reserve to the side and then um, went ahead and removed the uh, serpentine belt. So the next thing I removed is these two vacuum hoses here and then this fuel line here and this is a little tricky um, you just have to pinch those two and pull this out so um, be careful uh, especially if there's pressure so you might want to open your uh, gas cap to release pressure and just be careful with fuel shooting out okay I thought I could get away with not having to take the front end off but it's gonna make it a little bit easier so I went ahead went ahead and removed the bumper cover um, the radiator bracket here um, I was able to get there's a 10 millimeter on the side here just like on the other side um, it's probably difficult to get in here but I was able to get in here with the wobbly so so you, the headlights may have to come off but once that is off, I should be able to pull this radiator out. Okay, so I went ahead and I removed the condenser brackets to give it a little bit of room. Um, I had to take the 10 millimeter bolt for the reservoir and kind of feed it out so I can get room. Make sure you unplug all the fans um, and then there's a plug down here as well um, right here and then um, and then I had to remove this white clip so it can release this wire from the radiator and then <clears throat> I should be able to pull it out now Okay, I probably should should have suggested this, but taking the radiator uh, radiator out actually gives you a lot more room where you can unplug these plugs. And um, so, what I'm going to try to do here, um, without having to uh, take this to a, a machine shop to vacuum out the AC line, I'm going to try to unbolt these bolts from the AC condenser without having to remove any lines. Instead of unplugging all of this charge harness cable, um, the easiest way is to just follow, follow the line all the way to this fuse box and take that bolt out and take that bolt out. 
and um, and then we're just gonna drop uh, charge harness with the engine. Okay, the two eights are out. I'm just gonna feed charge harness cable here and this wire I can just take out. So once the cable is out of the way, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this bolt on this front mount and that rear bolt in the rear. So with this rear mount, what I'm going to do here underneath the subframe is there's three uh, 14 millimeter bolts that I'm going to shoot out and then that will release release this mount from the subframe with those three 14 millimeter bolts I had to use a breaker bar okay so the next thing I'm gonna do here is the subframe I need to drop so there are 17 millimeter bolts I am gonna take off two in the front here and two in the rear and um, with this I'm gonna use a jack to support it but uh, Whatever you guys do, this is a disclosure. Uh, this is can be very dangerous, so just know that the subframe is a pretty heavy and there's only four bolts holding it up. Okay, so I removed the two 17 millimeter bolts. I'm just gonna support subframe. And then now I'm gonna go on to the other side for the other two. Okay, now the subframe is dropped and I'm just gonna get it out of my way. So the next thing I want to do here is I want to use a 12.10 uh, millimeter and I'm going to take out four bolts on this drive shaft here. Okay, with these bolts, they're a little tricky. I had to use a wobbly um, and, uh, and a breaker bar to get these bolts loose. Okay, once... The drive shaft is off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this exhaust. Um, I may be, may be able to just, uh, you know what, I might have to just take out this cat. Um, so that's the next thing I'm gonna do. Okay, with the subframe out of the way, I went, in, went ahead and took the AC condenser bolts off, so. I'm gonna remove it from the engine. Okay, with the AC condenser unhooked, I'm just gonna bungee it out of the way. So it's gonna be a little tricky trying to squeeze this out. Um, and uh, it may be, I'm hoping I wouldn't have to, but I may have to take the alternator out of the way. But let's see if I can do it without it. Okay, with the engine supported underneath. Um, however you guys do this, um, you know, I probably recommend a cherry uh, engine hoist. Um, but whatever you, whatever way you guys take it out, um, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, but the last thing that I need to do here is I need to remove this bolt and these two top bolts so the engine can drop. I was able to remove the engine successfully. You may want to use an engine hoist to lower it down. If you found this video useful, please hit the like and subscribe button, comment below, and thank you for watching.